Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. Today we are going to start talking about the celestial sphere and over the next couple of months I will go through a number of the different parts of the celestial sphere and explain a little bit about how this works. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what is the celestial sphere? Well, essentially, it is an imaginary sphere around the Earth. So it surrounds Earth. And we that's what we see when we look up at the sky. So when you lay out in the at night, take a look up at the sky, you're seeing the celestial sphere. And that's where it seems like everything is located. It seems like the sun, the moon, the planets and the stars are all located on this great sphere that orbits around Earth. Now this dates back to the times of geocentric models or Earth centered models, where we thought that Earth was the center of the universe. And for the purposes here, it's actually still quite useful for describing positions on the sky. So we can still use this model even though we know that things in the sky are at vastly different distances that the sun and the moon are a lot closer and the stars are a lot more distant. We can still imagine that they're all attached to this great celestial sphere and it allows us to do things such as determine positions of objects in the sky. And in coming discussions we will look at how that is done. But just as we determine positions on Earth with a latitude and longitude, we can do something very similar in the sky with something similar to latitude and something similar to longitude. And we can use that to specify coordinates that give us locations that will then uh, work just as we have here on Earth. So just as we get positions on Earth, we can determine positions of objects in the sky on the celestial sphere. So where an object happens to be located on this sphere, we can then use that and get a set of coordinates to determine. So what am I going to talk about in this series? Well, I'm going to look at various different parts of the celestial sphere. Now some of those are labeled here and we will talk about those incoming discussions. We have the north and south celestial poles, for example, and we'll see later that those are actually the projection of the Earth's poles out onto the celestial sphere. We will see the celestial equator pictured here, and that is the projection of the Earth's equator out onto the sky. So those allow us then to kind of map the sky just the way we map Earth. We will measure things relative to the equator and the poles as we measure positions here on Earth. We use a latitude that is how far you are above or below Earth's equator. And there's a similar coordinate that we'll look at called declination on the sky that can also measure position on the sky as north and south of the celestial equator. So we will talk about those and other different coordinate systems and other parts of the celestial sphere as we go through this series over the next couple of months. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary here. And what we've looked at is, first of all, that the celestial sphere is an imaginary sphere. So it's an imaginary sphere that surrounds Earth. It is based on a geocentric model. It is very Earth centric. We are at the center and everything is appearing to move around us. But since that's how everything does appear to move, it is actually very useful for determining things like positions of objects in the sky. So that concludes this discussion on introducing the celestial sphere. We'll be back again next time to talk about another part of the celestial sphere. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.